now up till now we have studied grignard reagent we have seen one uh, small conversion concerning grignard reagent and we have seen most of the reactions we have seen almost all the reactions of grignard reagent and we have seen one of the reaction of grignard reagent when it attacks carbonyl group now the now this thing we understand now quite well that this grignard reagent has negative charge on carbon so this will this will attack the carbon of carbonyl group because the carbon of carbonyl group is electron deficient because of the shifting of electronic density of this c double bond o towards oxygen because of greater electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen now similarly suppose we have carbon dioxide gas in carbon dioxide gas we have two c double bond o and the deficiency of electron on the carbon in carbon dioxide gas is much greater than what it is in carbonyl group so because there are two c double bonds o and electrons will be pulled by oxygen on both the sides of carbon so the deficiency will be cumulative effect of these two and the deficiency will be greater so somehow if i made this grignard reagent and this carbon dioxide gas to react by adding carbon dioxide gas in a high pressure or by adding dry ice into the system having grignard reagent then this grignard reagent will come and attack this carbon the pi bonds will shift on to the oxygen and we will have carboxylate ion now this carboxylate ion on subsequent protonation will result as a carboxylic acid this becomes a important method of preparation of carboxylic acid which we will again see in the chapter carboxylic acid so this is the reaction that we must be aware of and i'll use this reaction in the conversions that subsequently we are going to do so when grignard reagent reacts with carbonyl compound it produces carboxylate uh, when grignard reagent reacts with carbon dioxide gas it produces carboxylate ion and on subsequent protonation we have carboxylic acid now at this juncture i would like to tell you a reaction that a reagent that is quite similar to grignard reagent but uh, it differs much in the reactivity with the grignard reagent in grignard reagent we have r m g x negative charge on r and we have magnesium ion as a central ion now this is dialkyl cadmium in dialkyl cadmium will also have negative charge on r but here the central metal ion will be cadmium in case of grignard reagent we have magnesium so uh, chemically both are comprised of the reactive part that is r minus but the difference in reactivity will be much because here we have magnesium ion this magnesium ion is a s block element magnesium is a s block metal here we have cadmium cadmium is a d block metal magnesium belong to third period cadmium belong to fifth period in magnesium we don't have d orbitals in cadmium we do have d orbitals in magnesium shielding effect is more in cadmium shielding effect is less so what happens is in magnesium ion internally you have a nucleus that has some positive charge and when you have some electron outside this nucleus attracts those electrons same would be the case with cadmium in cadmium you will have a bigger nucleus because of greater atomic size you will also have distance from the nucleus larger because the shell number will be higher than that in case of magnesium so if you have some external electron and these electrons i'm ta talking about th are the electrons of this r so they are not in the shell of cadmium they are not in the shell of magnesium but they are outside but still this nucleus will have some influence on these electrons and th this nucleus will tend to attract these electrons same will be the case case with magnesium but uh, in case of cadmium 
there is more shielding effect. Now, this shielding effect term you must have heard in the chapter periodic table, or in case you haven't heard yet, you will study in the case in the chapter periodic table. Shielding effect means that suppose this is an internal shell between the outer shell and the nucleus, and there are some electrons in between. Now, these electrons will try to shield the effect of this nucleus to the outer electron. This this effect is called shielding effect. If you have some electrons in between, these electrons will tend to repel the electrons which are in the outer shell or outside the outermost shell. So it will act as a barrier between the internal nucleus and the outermost electron. Now this effect is called shielding effect. Now since the electrons, most of the electrons in cadmium is in d orbital. So uh, d orbital as we know, it is a bigger orbital. It is more diffused than s and p. So this shielding effect, because electrons are more diffused, see, so they cover more of the space around. I mean, uh, here we are looking at the Bohr model. We are, we ha I have drawn orbits, but after studying atomic structure, we do understand that electrons are not f like particles revolving in an orbit. They are diffused in space, and when the orbital is bigger, that diffusion is greater, and the shielding effect becomes less pronounced. So what happens is, nucleus has greater access, have a greater influence on the outermost electron. So this nucleus will attract the outermost electron more strongly than what this nucleus does. So due to shielding effect, lesser shielding effect of electron, the outermost electron is not shielded with the nucleus. So they are more attracted to the nucleus. So this cadmium plus 2 ion will attract the negative charge of this R- minus more strongly, much more strongly than what this magnesium ion does. So this R- minus, in case of dialkyl cadmium is more tightly held than what this R- minus in case of magnesium plus 2 ion is held. So this R- minus gets tends to get stabilized because of stronger electrostatic force of attraction. It, there will be kind of ionic bonding because both are ions. And here that kind of ionic bonding will be very less because the attractive force with magnesium will be less. So that becomes the reason why this dialkyl cadmium is less reactive than Grignard reagent. Because in dialkyl cadmium, the nucleus of the metal, that is cadmium, offers more attraction to the negative charge of the alkyl group and that tends to stabilize it. So these electrons are more tightly held with the cadmium, so they are less free to get poured into the orbital of some other atom. So this becomes less reactive, this becomes less, more inert towards pouring its electron into someone else's orbital. And by now it's very clear to all of us that reactions are nothing but transfer of electron from one orbital to another. And if the electrons are very tightly held in one's orbital, they will have less tendency to get transferred to someone else's orbital. So that will make it less reactive. So the bottom line of whole discussion is dialkyl cadmium is much less reactive than Grignard reagent. This intuitively we can understand. Same would be the case if instead of Grignard reagent, in, instead of magnesium plus 2 ion, I take copper plus 2 ion. If I have Cu plus 2 ion, and R minus is somehow bonded with the Cu plus 2 ion, although it's not a complete ionic bond, but still, this is some kind of electrostatic force of attraction between this R- and Cu plus 2. And this electrostatic force of attraction is greater than what magnesium offers. So Cu plus 2 will have same kind of reactivity as Cd plus 2. So both the alkyl group, if they are, if they are attached with divalent metals of D block, they will be less reactive. If they are attached with divalent metals of S block, they will be more reactive. This you must understand. And what, does, what is the parameter of this less reactive and more reactive? This we are going to understand. And you have to bear this in mind towards the end of the syllabus. I have to understand it because this thing will be again repeated in all the chapters that we are subsequently going to start. Now the difference in reactivity that we are talking about is this. Suppose I take acyl chloride. Now this acyl chloride is most reactive of all the 
acid derivatives as we have seen because the bond of this the, the electrons of this bond are shifting towards oxygen and the electrons of this bond is also shifting towards oxygen as we have uh, also shifting towards chlorine as we have seen many a times before because chlorine being halogen and in case of halogen we know that the inductive effect dominates over mesomeric effect so it will pull up more of the electron via inductive effect than what it does than what it gives through plus m effect so there are two electron electron withdrawing groups attached with carbon so the electron deficiency on this carbon is quite high so in this case when there's a large amount of deficiency on carbon both dialkyl cadmium and grignard reagent are able to react with this acyl chloride so whether you add grignard reagent or you add alkyl cadmium to this acyl chloride you will have ketone this we have seen many times how we'll get this actually this R- minus will go and attack the carbonyl group and to facilitate the regeneration of C double bond O the Cl- minus have to be removed off so the Cl- minus will come out of the substrate and a ketone formation will be there this we have already seen now the difference comes here when it becomes a ketone now in this ketone instead of chlorine you have R group here chlorine was electron withdrawing the electron here R group will be pumping in the electron R group will be giving electron to this electron deficient carbon so in here chlorine was increasing electron deficiency here R is decreasing electron deficiency so the electron deficiency of the carbon in carbonyl group of ketone is less than the electron deficiency of this carbon in acyl chloride so this carbon becomes less reactive than this carbon so the difference in reactivity is such that Grignard reagent will be able to react with this carbon dialkyl cadmium will not be able to react with this carbon this you have to bear in mind the reactivity difference of Grignard reagent and dialkyl cadmium is such that dialkyl cadmium will not be able to react with ketonic or aldehyde group dialkyl cadmium will not be able to react with carbonyl groups Grignard reagent definitely will be able to react now if we have a sil chloride then both will be able to react so this carbonyl compound this ketone and this aldehyde becomes a parameter with aldehyde ketones all those compounds which will be more reactive than aldehyde and ketones dialkyl cadmium will be able to react all those compounds which are equally reactive to aldehyde and ketones and are less reactive than aldehydes and ketones this dialkyl cadmium will not be able to react with them because the reactivity of both substrate and reagent if that is less there is no reaction as you have seen in your previous early classes at school level that if, if you have a strong acid and you have a weak base then this is a reaction but if you have a weak acid and you have a weak base then the reaction extent is very less so similarly if you have a strong substrate and if you have a strong reagent then definitely reaction will take place but if you have a strong substrate and if you even if you don't have a strong reagent still reaction will take place because here this acyl chloride is a strong substrate because it is un uh, this is unstable this is very very reactive and even if you have a less reactive reagent like dialkyl cadmium still reaction occurs and you will have a ketone but once you have a ketone the substrate is also less reactive and the reagent is also re less reactive in that case you don't have any reaction so this you have to remember ketone and compounds less stable than ketone will not react with dialkyl cadmium or Gilman's reagent where you have copper plus 2 ion instead of cadmium plus 2 and with Grignard reagent of course all of them will react because Grignard reagent is very reactive because it's very unstable.